What is up, my fellow mighty little men? It's the Bazinga Boys, episode two. I am Simeon Jimmy, joined here as always by Florian Himsel and the Purple Colonel. Yeah, man, everyone ready for more Bazinga? We we never miss a single day, you know? We, we're going to review Young Sheldon and Big Bang Theory every single day, just like we said. Nah, I, you know? I assume, Florian, you're being sarcastic because there were some people who were confused in the comment section. Like, they thought we would actually be doing the show every day, which I'm, I'm pretty sure we never said anything suggesting that. We were pretty specific this would be a weekly show. So I, I guess it's... Yeah kind of you to uh, include those <laughs> trolls in the discussion here. Are you saying today's not the second April? The second week of April? I mean, I, I don't know how your calendars work over in Austria, <laughs> but... Yeah, it's the seventh today, you know? <laughs> yep. Yep, and there's All the right. purple colonel, feeling as purple yeah. as ever, I assume. Yep, I'm, I'm purple, I'm, I'm ready to go. I'm Just like Texas in 2030, purple. Uh, yep. And I hope that the extremely loud windstorm outside my window cannot be picked up on the mic, but maybe we'll add some... mm, uh, What do they call that when uh, there's like an annoying sound in the background, but you pretend it's on purpose to add like atmosphere? Is that it? Just atmosphere? I think that's just lying. (laughs) Okay. Yeah, we're going to lie about the atmosphere. Um, Is it just me or does the Young Sheldon theme song sound like a Dragon Ball Z villain? Like nobody else is stronger than I am. Yesterday I moved a mountain. You know, it's like they they're calling out Goku to fight him. Wow. Well, I, I wouldn't know. I I don't even remember this this theme song until I I saw I I I paid attention to it this one time and I don't know. I feel like I I, I was uplifted by it. I thought, man, he's really gonna, gonna stupid move mountains. You know? But no, <laughs> no I. I did no, not he's... care for this theme song. It's it's pretty pretty annoying and bad. So. Now purple, <laughs> yeah. well, how come skipping. purple? How come whenever you talk, it sounds like you're pay, you're playing fucking cookie clicker and you're constantly clicking your mouse? Uh, that's because I'm fucking autistic as hell and I cannot stop clicking shit. Well, you so absolutely I'm, must I'm because a, it was the entire last episode was <laughs> you clicking. I'm, I'm making. I, I listened back to it and I'm making a conscious effort not to. Well, not evidently to not because I just heard it. What do you mean? I, I don't hear it. It might be me. Is, is it me? He's clicking I, it through I your microphone? So. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I mean, let's yeah. move on to everybody's favorite Bazinga Boys segment, which is Florian's Grinder Update. Oh, oh. So what's been going on since last time, Florian? Uh, you know, uh, like the, the main issue with our society, you know, uh, women, apparently they've infiltrated Grindr. So that what? Now they... Now you're never safe. Yeah, I, 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 I got this this cute boy, and and he messaged me, and and he said, "Oh, I'm actually a woman who's pissed at this boy because he he stood me up on a date, and now I'm gonna I signed him up on Grinder so that men will harass him at his work. Like what? What? So it looks like he's gay. Like, yeah, and and she wants them to to go to his work and and flirt with him there obnoxiously. Wow. Well, that's that's evil. Yeah, I know. I you told should, you, you should like report that account or something. Get him off of I, there. I did. What the hell. Okay. I, I told her he. It's good he stood you up because you're a fucking crazy stalker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's insane. But well, so that's the the grinder update is that you met a woman on there. <laughs> well, I, I guess so. Yeah. And no I'm foot rubs gonna, yet. I, I'm I'm probably gonna do the foot rub next week. So okay. We'll see. Hopefully that's you can report back on the Young Sheldon podcast about your gay foot rub. You know, <laughs> yep. that's, I'm excited to hear more as the story <laughs> yeah. develops. Yeah, this is clearly the best part, right? Of this, it, it's the most intriguing hanging story thread that we will discuss today. Yeah. I wonder. I wonder how mm-hmm. long I'll I'll continue using to uh, grinder. Yeah. I have moved it onto the first page of my my apps on the phone. It's no longer hidden away on the third page that I never use. <laughs> hmm. Okay. It's, it's good enough. For easy access at a moment's notice, just yeah. in case, you know. Can we get a yeah. full mapping of the apps in your phone to know which ones you really prioritize? <laughs> like, what is yeah. as important as Grinder, Facebook? <laughs> Well, just WhatsApp and Telegram, because those are the only things I need to use, because they don't work just on the PC. 
Okay. okay. We're getting a deep dive into Florian Psyche today, but now let's dive into <laughs> Sheldon Cooper's because we've got another double dose. That's right. We're comparing Big Bang Theory Episode 2 to Young Sheldon Episode 2. Oh, God. Oh, Lordy. What a comparison we have in store. Shall we yep. begin with the Big Bang Theory? Yep. I think I think we should. Now, in terms of Big Bang Theory, I think we need to start a running uh, character power ranking, you know, that, that sort of thing, <laughs> because uh, some characters are clearly coming out ahead of the others. And in episode two, the Jewish nerd Howard has really come into his own as the where Leonard is the the shy, nervous nerd who's afraid to make eye contact and talk to women. Howard has that like the arrogance, like the arrogant, confident nerd who has no game, but it does not stop him from having full confidence. And I wonder if it's because like his religion g- gives him the, the wow. you know, the, the feeling of, oh, we, we already control the whole world anyway. Why not just have the confidence in everyday life to talk to women? So the fact that Howard is just like openly hitting on Penny and looking her in the face and speaking Russian to call her beautiful. And he's also a complete Chad at Dance Dance Revolution and gets the high score. Uh, I would say he is uh, currently second place uh, behind Sheldon on my power ranking list so far. Why? Why would he? Well, I mean, I guess he's probably close, but like, like he's not. You think he's better than Raj? Huh? <laughs> what are you even I, trying I, I to think say? Raj is... Well, well, Raj is pretty good. At least he doesn't talk to her at all that's that's probably preferable well, if we're ranking the five sheldon is number one power gap well, number two howard number three leonard number four penny and number five is raj he has not done anything to earn a spot yet <laughs> oh absolutely I'm, I'm, fucking I'm, not okay I'm, raj I'm he got a hug unprompted in this episode he's he's winning the power well, ranking is not stronger. like on who can move the mountain like young sheldon it's just who i like okay don't be like eerich getting confused that i said that oh, no. that the human Human character in the Godzilla Kong movie was number two. That does not mean he's fucking stronger than Godzilla. It means he's a better character, you dumb fucky rich. Well, why, why would you call it fucking fucking power level? Because that it's not power levels, it's power <laughs> ranking! <laughs> That's what the meme is called! Power rankings! When you I've put shit in the this. order of what you like, it's not power levels! What? For fuck's sake! What are you doing? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm calling HR. <laughs> Leonard, yeah. he's third place, <laughs> and Howard is second. Is that is that so hard to understand? I mean, I feel like like Sheldon probably should be at the bottom in this episode because he just randomly burglarizes his neighbor now. So wrong, wrong, wrong. Sheldon once again was in the right. Uh, <laughs> really? He does not burgle anything. A woman, a beautiful woman who lives in filth, sometimes needs uh, an just autistic man. An autistic man needs to come in and clean that for her. Now, I don't want to peel back the curtain too much, but as a man who does live with a very sexy woman, it is true that her room of the house is the filthiest one. So sometimes hot chicks just don't like to clean. And as an autistic man, sometimes I do go in there and tidy it up for her. So I related to Shelton in this episode. And once again, he did nothing wrong. Yeah, breaking and entering. Hell yeah. I just can't have I any think... room in my house be filthy. It's bad enough having four cats to clean after. Now I got a human <laughs> as well. Four Sheldon's... cats? What is wrong with you? Why would you? Wow. Have Hashtag fake fan. It's been this way for over a year at this point, Florian. Jesus, over a year. Wow. My dad has yeah. five or four cats, so he's you know. <laughs> I was satisfied with like three, but then one of them it. one of them popped out a baby on April Fool's Day of last year. Uh, oh. Okay, well, that's probably why I didn't register it. I thought it was a joke. Hmm. Yeah. Did you wish your cat happy birthday when we fucking did the other episode? Uh, go look at my Instagram, you motherfucker. Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't know you were on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> I don't uh, really use that shit. Yeah, I mean, I only use it to post pictures of my cats. That's all it's good for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Uh, but I guess if anything is going to take Howard's power away from being number two on my power ranking is that uh, he does have a peanut allergy. So he has, he has to be the kind of nerd who is like, oh, guys, is there peanut oil in this in this fucking Thai curry? Uh, yeah, probably, motherfucker. But yeah, that, that would be a real problem. That's my favorite oil to cook with. Poor guy. 
The peanut oil? I also use that in my air fryer. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I heard it's not a seed oil, so it's good for you. And I just believe anything I read on Twitter. Isn't it specific? Un, not specifically seeds. <laughs> I certainly hope not. I don't know if no. anything you're cooking in the air fryer is going to be like fixed if you just don't put seed oil in it. I don't know if that's how that's going to work. I don't. I mean, I never use oil in my air fryer. I'm talking about a deep fryer. Oh, you said air fryer a second ago. <laughs> well, if I the did, I show. deserve to be uh, yeah, skull did. fucked like the bad guy in Serbian film. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Penny, uh, and I, I did do some research on this because uh, anytime I can prove a blonde woman wrong, it makes me feel good. Uh, Penny bitches that working as a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory, she only makes minimum wage. Now, I know neither of you are American, so you might not understand our culture, but would either of you like to guess why she is wrong? Uh, Um, Because there's no minimum wage? No, that can't be it. I I assume California has higher than the federal minimum wage would be my guess. So in America... And I assume you guys know this, like waiters and wait staff, they don't get paid the minimum wage. They get paid oh, like yeah. half of it. It's like you get paid three bucks an hour, but then your tips are what are supposed to supplement your income. And the Cheesecake Factory, while not actually being a fancy restaurant, it does pretend to be one. And it does have the inflated prices on all of their meals. So you can expect each person to be spending at least like 20, 30 bucks per fucking shitty meal of pasta that costs the restaurant two cents to make. <laughs> uh, and there is an average expectation of 15 to 20 percent of a tip on the total bill. So as a waitress at the Cheesecake Factory, you're going to be serving tables with over one hundred dollar bills at the end. So you're tipping at, at those tables is going to be approximately 15 to 20 bucks each. So I did the research. It turns out the average earnings of a Cheesecake Factory waitress are between 20 to 30 dollars per hour, which is Jeez. three to four times higher than the federal wow. minimum wage. So uh, Penny needs to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Yeah. That's crazy. Wow. Stupid bitch is making like hundreds a day bringing food to people's tables and she has the audacity to bitch that she's not making enough. <laughs> that sounds yeah. like a realistic woman right there. Wow. Yeah. Well, speaking of people getting paid by the Cheesecake Factory, though, I want to know. No, how no, 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 no. Not paid here. by the Cheesecake well, Factory, by yeah. the customers of the factory. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a fucking segue you Rick, okay. But, okay, uh, that's fine. <laughs> Young Sheldon's already bringing us apart. Yeah, it's we're gonna be we're gonna be bitter rivals by the end here. But uh, I I want to know how much they're paying Big Bang Theory to advertise the Cheesecake Factory because I only knew about this restaurant from this show for like years and years. Yeah, and I I assumed it was like a literal factory, but it just make cheesecakes. Yeah, it's a shitty restaurant. Like, I've been there maybe four times. I've never had one bite of food that was good. Like, it is the menu is legitimately 30 full pages. So the fact that they don't specialize in any one fucking course on the menu means that it's probably just the chef might make something once a week. Like, that's how dense the menu is. There's no speciality or expertise involved. It's just fucking goy slop thrown in the microwave pretty much. Yeah, I don't remember it being good when I, I I had it when we uh, took a vacation in like Las Vegas or something, and it was not great. Well, is the cheesecake at least good? Yeah, I don't think we had the cheesecake. I mean, <laughs> I I would hope that they at least get that right, but you can get cheesecake yeah, just... at like fucking McDonald's. Yeah, I mean they have really good cheesecake actually. McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not like the retards working at McDonald's make it, so I I would hope it's at least halfway good. I guess not, yeah. Does everything just get delivered? Damn. I mean, something like that probably does. It probably comes in frozen. Uh, But the plot of this episode is Penny, despite only knowing these nerds maybe a week, uh, she trusts uh, Leonard with a spare key to her apartment so that when her furniture order comes in, he can, you know, bring it in for her. And this leads to, after some real uh, debauchery with Sheldon and Leonard trying to bring this big box of, uh, I guess it's like a 
some sort of table that they're going to end up building or uh, yeah, it's like a media center where you put your you put your tv uh, and you put your like your game consoles or whatever underneath it too yeah they're, they're trying to drag this big box up the stairs and i feel like uh this was a wasted opportunity like they're trying to do some physical humor in this show that is mostly dependent on nerds saying nerdy shit and let's just say these guys are no three stooges uh as they're bumbling around trying to get this up the stairs and they drop it and it's like falling I feel like uh, more better physical comedians could have made it work better. I don't know. I, like these guys should be physically harming themselves constantly, <laughs> and, like accidentally, like like swinging the box wow. around and hitting the other guy in the back of the head. Like I, I want it. If you're gonna try to do the the bumbling oaf physical comedy, go full throttle and actually physically injure each other this was just kind oh, of like on. it was like a wet blanket like you're not really even trying it's it's so half-hearted well, I mean, well, I, it I would like have been it. fun to see yeah the more more intense physical comedy here but i i think it was good enough for for what they had to do for this episode you know I mean, I think it'd probably be silly if they actually really hurt themselves. Um, I would hope it is silly for this comedy show. Uh, well, just a little show, bit of silliness not, would be good. It's not super silly, though, this show. It's it's more yeah, so it really based on sense. just the situations and the dialogue are funny. Not really. We might have different definitions do. of silly. <laughs> Maybe. I, mean, uh, I, I enjoyed them putting it up the stairs. I'm surprised they actually got it up. That, that was pretty good. Well, yeah, oh, thankfully man. there's many cuts, so we don't actually see how they would physically do this, but... Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, at, now, last episode I was anti-Penny because she brought up this horoscope bullshit, and I, <laughs> I said, kick her out, we don't need her anymore. But this episode she won me back because Sheldon starts the most retardedly autistic argument I've ever heard, which was the, the scientific accuracy of Superman saving <laughs> Lois Lane. Yeah. And like, wow. Like, wow. It, we're, this is literally a cartoon superhero world we're talking about, like live action cartoon pretty much. And the fact that you're getting so genuinely upset about the scientific merit of catching a woman as she's falling. Like, it, Penny just abandons them as they're arguing in the hallway and goes to her apartment. And I, it was the most relatable moment. When people have those fucking nerd arguments like that, where they're taking it seriously about made up bullshit that's not even worth talking about. It also drives me insane. That's as bad as caring about your horoscope. Well, well I saw... Yeah. I, I thought it was well done. I, I thought that that's probably one of the first times we, we really heard about about Superman actually killing her that way. And and I thought the other notes were fucking stupid for arguing against it. Come on. See, I, I could tell you why you're wrong, but then I would be partaking in their same retarded argument, and I don't want to become what I hate. Yeah. I can tell you that uh, all of their Superman knowledge, especially Sheldon's, was up to date. For example, they do actually have Kryptonian skin cells that act like batteries and keep <laughs> keep his energy in so he can fly at night and stuff. Wow. That's, that's all true. That's all. But he, he was acting as if Superman's arms are literally made of steel so that when he tried to catch her, it would like bisect her body on his I arms. Mean, that, that, he is the man really of matter. steel. I mean, it, it yeah, but he can matter. also he shave. OK, you tell me that there's a razor blade <laughs> made out of Kryptonium that can sh that no, can cut his fucking missing, beard. Yeah. You're missing the point. Okay? It's a cartoon. He shaves with the with his fucking laser vision. He doesn't actually shave with the normal razor. No, it's a fucking cartoon. Okay, so Look, I don't I don't care. Superman is not literally made of steel. I, I I'll imagine use... he can choose to have human arms to hug his woman when he wants to. He's not going to squish you, her to death. You can die if you fall on water. Okay, it, it it's not the point where or not he's literally made of steel. Well, that's the point Sheldon was making, and then the other nerds correctly pointed out, if he just matches her velocity, it won't be like she's smashing down at a million miles an hour. He can just yeah, grab her in midair. That's not what we're seeing in the movie. There yeah, because space. in that scene, he catches her like like a second before he, she hits the ground or something. Exactly. I assume, because that's what he says. I haven't actually seen the Superman movie. Uh, I, mean, I mean, I trust Sheldon. The other, man, the other people are making bad points, okay? He definitely would have killed Lois, all right? If you're watching a live action Superman movie and you're baffled by the scientific inaccuracies, like that's a call for suicide at that point. Like you don't need to be on my planet Earth anymore. 
Well, that's that's in character with Sheldon. And uh, I think the rest were trying to argue with him just because, you know, arguing on his level is the only way they ever get him to do anything or agree with anything. So, well, yeah, I mean, they it's silly, though, because he was right. Oh, well, <laughs> it, yeah, it is unfortunate that they were horribly wrong here. Okay. So as uh, Sheldon and Leonard are dragging the box up the stairs, Sheldon pulls out some black pill logic for us and he says, hey, listen up, Leonard, okay? Just because you're doing a favor for a woman, it's not going to increase your chances of sleeping with her. And Leonard's like, oh, what? No, uh, that's not what I'm doing, but surely this wouldn't lower the chances, right? <laughs> so what do you guys think of this? Do women like it when you do nice things for them or do they, do they only open their legs for people who have never done anything nice for them ever? I mean, we specifically see that, that Penny is in fact like growing on Leonard in, at the end of the episode. And, and even when she talks to Ross, she's like, yeah, maybe this Leonard guy is actually pretty good. You know, even though it seems like he, he might just be in it for himself, but he, He's really nice and helpful, and I, I think I think Leonard's plan here is good, and and Sheldon is entirely wrong, and of course, of course, he will be proven wrong. <laughs> you think that that autistic Sheldon should not be giving relationship advice? Like maybe he's not the expert on what a woman wants or thinks. I mean, it's it's a pretty conventional advice here. I think that 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 it wouldn't be like smart to just completely like be simping for her, you know, because that's not necessarily the best course of action. But I mean, it can work. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what about you, Purple? Um, I, I, I don't, I don't claim to have experience in this field. So oh my God. I'm actually sure, <laughs> hmm. you know. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're terrible gay nerds. We, we're <laughs> clueless. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I'll just say, uh, if you uh, feel this way about women, you have the same perspective as Sheldon. And that's, <laughs> that's all there is to say about it. Well, he is my role model, so I'm just going to take this at face value, I think. <laughs> yeah. Never do anything <laughs> nice for women. Just treat them like shit. That's all they want. Yeah. Uh, we, we have the two of them go into Penny's apartment, and it's just disorganized and filthy, like clothes littered all over the floor. And for some reason, like the paintings, like the wall art is crooked. Now, I can understand being a little messy and leaving, you know, your shit around. But why is she like, why is she making her art cr crooked? Like that had to have been done on purpose. <laughs> we know from the last episode, she's just getting out of a breakup. So I can see her very quickly throwing these things up and sort of. Figuring she'll get around to it later. Maybe she's a little depressed, you know. Well, I guess she just half asses it completely, just hanging it halfway. Well, Florian, look around your room right now. Are all of the paintings on the walls perfectly straight? I'm actually, like, pretty Spartan, and I don't have a single painting on my walls, so... Oh, uh, you don't have that Hitler painting of that big <laughs> mansion castle up in the mountains? I mean, I guess that would definitely be straight if I had it. Hmm. I did try to buy a copy of that, but it was not for sale. Strange. Yeah, like somebody should be profiting off of that. You know, donate the money to some Jews. Domain. I don't know who who has the who has the fucking rights to Hitler's artwork. Well, I've got so I've I got Chat GPT pulled up right now, so let's ask. Uh, I I <laughs> think I actually know this. I think it's actually like I th I think there was like one person who 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 survived Hitler's net. Hitler's name, and then they decided to donate the the rights to to Israel or something. I might be um, wrong, actually. Ownership of Hitler's artwork varies. Some pieces are in the possession of private collectors, museums, or auction houses, while others are in the possession well, that's of the physical shit. I want to know yeah, the intellectual the rights. property rights here. Uh, given the sensitive nature, there may be restrictions or limitations on the reproduction, sale, or display of his artwork. Shocking. Okay. Yeah, that's too bad. That's, I thought the painting was good, and I I can separate the art from the artist. You know, that's my special talent. And... Yeah, that you specifically have it despite who painted it, and not because. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, I would have loved this painting. Yeah. <laughs> no matter you what name was in the corner, and, and you immediately knew that this I'm painting sure you spoke would. to you yeah. on on a level that that most people wouldn't understand. You. Know? I just want to live to in say... a castle in the mountains. 
Yeah, the same way like most people don't hear a whistle that is made for dogs. This is the, it, it, it appealed to you in the same <laughs> You're way. You're saying Hitler's artwork is a dog whistle of some kind. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. So Shelton, he has severe OCD. He likes to keep things tidy, and this is wigging him out. So in the middle of the night, he breaks into Penny's apartment while she's sleeping, and like the bedroom door is open. We can see her snoring and sleeping. And Sheldon is cleaning up for her, and Leonard runs in disgusted and afraid, but he eventually helps Sheldon anyway. Yeah, so Sheldon reaching a new low of all time where he not only breaks his own advice of not helping women for, for no reason, but also breaks the the face that was put in him by, by, by Leonard to not take the key and... <laughs> break and enter with it oh my god now i i think sheldon is not doing it to help penny you know whereas leonard was being selfish saying oh i'm gonna help penny because it might get my dick wet sheldon is being selfish in the sense of being near filth upsets his ocd and he personally needs it clean if he's going to get any sleep so he's not doing it for penny's benefit he's doing it for himself which is something i respect Mm hmm like imagine I, only doing a, a favor because you expect to get laid. Here, <laughs> Sheldon's doing a favor to give himself peace of mind. Well, he's specifically doing it to get laid in his own bed, you know, at night, to sleep at night. Yeah. So, pre- pretty similar. Hmm. So true. As they say, men will do anything but go to therapy. I believe that's the meme. <laughs> I would rather clean a hot chick's apartment than go to therapy. Imagine if if your neighbor just randomly came in and messed with your shit because they don't like how it is. Oh, my God. (laughs) Yeah. Well, at the end of the episode, she admits that she does like how the apartment looks now. So ultimately, Sheldon was in the right. And, you know, he convinced her that his way is better. And now she has two boys simping for her. Perfect. I don't think he is simping for her. Well, I guess you can just... I get the feeling in these early episodes that what they might have been going for is like Penny might have fallen for him first just in spite of the fact that he like clearly hates her or something <laughs> well if anything penny might have a crush on raj because we get this scene where uh they come across each other in the hallway and although raj is too scared to speak to her and remains silent she confides in him and and says all of her thoughts and feelings about what sheldon and leonard did because uh, she was pissed she did come in that morning and, and scream at them yeah. Well, yeah, she should. But I mean, if you if you listen to what she said, I'm I'm pretty sure that she she actually considers well one of them at least to be like a viable mate, and then she's thinking, damn, they really betrayed my trust. But but also they they seemed like such nice guys, and I think Rash was just there and he he listened, so that's good, I guess. That's yeah, move, and but. we get a. Uh some Raj voiceover like while she's talking (laughs) it's kind of drowned out and we can hear his inner monologue and it's just like the show Peep Show that's one of my favorite uh, British sitcoms where most of the show uh, you could just hear the characters thoughts and like and the difference between what they're thinking and what they actually say uh, tends to be pretty funny so you know good for Raj he's he's mixing it up we don't really get to hear other characters yeah we don't get to hear anybody else's inner monologue just him so I wonder if he'll be like this rare exception or, you know, if everybody will eventually get this power. <laughs> I mean, it's I don't only remember them doing because... that again in the whole show. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, they do. They only do it because he's clearly going through something, but can't express himself any other way. <laughs> And as Penny is confiding in Raj, uh, she says that her sister got drunk and shot her husband with a gun. Yeah, I, w- I guess I guess he must have come in at night, and then I, she. Shot I don't him. know. Well, clearly, what we need is a, a young Penny show to clear this up, <laughs> and get more details on this incident. Well, we do get details about young penny because she says at the age of 12 when she lived on the farm she built a whole tractor engine so we we must have had the wrong impression like we think that penny is some some ditzy blonde who believes in horoscopes and astrology but actually she was raised as a good old boy good old girl up on a farm in the south or whatever the fuck uh so she Uh, has like yeah nebraska that's basically close enough to the south for me to consider it so uh, is Penny's uh, like farm girl youth a big part of her character going forward? 
Uh, mm -hmm. They play into it sometimes. It's usually not a, a huge focus, but, you know, it's there under the surface, and I think it, it does inform her character. I guess they meet the family at some point, right? Seems pretty pretty crazy. Hmm. I want to say, like, every character's mother ends up showing up in this show, so, <laughs> yeah. Is one of their mothers just them wearing a wig? Uh, <laughs> maybe Howard's. We don't actually see her physically, yeah. so that's possible. Okay. It could be, like, well, a Norman Bates situation. Well, someone's got to do the voice. It's probably not Howard. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. Maybe it might be just, Howard. Maybe it's just in his head. We don't know. <laughs> wow. Yeah, she's just this this presence looming over him at all times, but she's not actually there. Maybe she's been dead all along. Yeah, just rotting away. I know the the woman who voiced her died, <laughs> and then they I think they had oh, to replace fuck. her for the last couple seasons. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Damn. And do we have any other thoughts on this episode? Hmm. I don't. I don't think so. I think we've hit all the all the important marks. There is the bit at the end where they start redesigning her media center with like liquid cooling for the stereo and stuff like that. Oh uh, yeah, I bet they they're just gonna completely abandon all the great plans they've made in the next episode, and they're never gonna be seen again. Well, that's kind of the idea: is that they were completely <laughs> overthinking the blueprints while Penny was just building it from the pieces, and that, that's when she talks about how she built an engine. So she's more of like a hands-on, give me the pieces and I'll start building kind of brain, whereas they, very meticulous, they want to plan everything out and and ignore the schematics and build their own. So I think by the time they got back to her apartment, like the thing is already done and built by her, yeah, but, so they can just move they, on. But they could just implement the stuff they bought. I, I don't know, it could work. She's a simple farm girl, so you don't need all that <laughs> fancy schmancy high-tech Tech bullshit. She doesn't need a water cooled stereo behind the TV. Hmm, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, why does a stereo need water cooling? Are stereos known to overheat? <laughs> I don't know. They claim that it, they do. So, like, how I loud is she blasting this shit in her that. apartment? <laughs> Wait, the stereos don't get warm at all, right? I don't. Fuck. I don't think so. I, I don't know. I've I, never known about a warm stereo. So. <laughs> Damn, could they have made a critical mistake in the writing department here? <laughs> it's possible. This could be the first the first crack in this glorious show. Other than that Superman conversation. I thought I well, love I mean, that. That was, okay, that was my realistic. favorite part. Oh my god. I mean that, that's a realistic conversation to be had by nerds. Yeah. It's it's like it's ahead of its time, okay? It's like <laughs> like this Redditor bullshit. It's <laughs> yes. truly ahead of its time. This show yeah, I, I mean, think helped invent Reddit. Like, Reddit culture probably. probably came mostly from the Big Bang Theory. I mean, they are definitely ahead of their time, right? Because they dress up, like, like as Avengers before the movies even happened, right? That happens at some point, yeah. Yeah, they, they're trailblazers of culture. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Young Sheldon, episode two. This one's all about how Young Sheldon has no friends, but he's content with that. That's the life he wants to live, but uh-oh. Young Sheldon's mom... She wants him to have friends, so he just to make his mom happy, he pursues trying to make a friend. And did you guys notice uh, this show is considerably shorter than Big Bang Theory? I, I was going to say, yeah, it's 18 it? minutes an episode instead of 22. Wow. Yeah. So I like, they, assume they started adding more horrible, <laughs> awful ads on like regular cable TV since I... Since I last watched, I don't yeah, know. is that not a great strategy? Like, cut down costs on your production by making them it's three minutes shorter, and we can have three extra minutes of ads. You know, so, like, why fuck not the have consumer. Twenty minutes of ad ads and ten minutes of the episode. You know, they might as well just, just <laughs> yeah. I hadn't actually noticed this at all, but I guess they're just getting the two extra minutes from Big Bang Theory. I, I did keep my around. eyes peeled for Will Sheldon touch his brother Georgie's hands, and they basically do not share a scene in this other than the dinner scene at the end. So, you know, yeah. as far as handhold watch goes, they're still good. <laughs> did not hold Tam's hand at the end either, his new friend. A yeah, new friend, Tam. But we'll get to that. Uh, Sheldon, yeah. he's explaining his philosophy of being lonely is good. If I talk to other people, uh, you know, as as Sartre, Sartre, the philosopher, said, hell is other people. Sheldon smirks to himself. Oh, that is so true, fam. Fuck those people. I want to sit alone at lunch and think about science. Uh, but his mom, who for some reason is at the school during lunch, is watching him yeah. with concern. Why is she there? Why, why is this bitch at the school at, during lunch? 
I guess she's going to make sure he doesn't harass the teachers again. <laughs> probably they're talking to the principal again or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, he definitely will harass the teachers in this episode, so she is not protecting them. <laughs> yeah, she's trying to make a friend. They could have been friends. He was giving them an olive branch. They could have, like, chilled out, honestly, <laughs> when we get to them. That's weird. <laughs> Sheldon's all, sister, all Missy, uh, Missy reports oh. to Sheldon, hey, mom's upset that you don't have any friends. And in response to this, the voiceover of Sheldon says, science fact, sisters are the worst. Yeah. <laughs> what? What, what yeah, are we, he, What's going on here? Well, it's very strange that Sheldon has has read this book because he is like specifically horrible at at still like being really rude to people and criticizing them really unduly. And he he has here this book and he has this perfect memory, so he's this this knowledge is burnt into his mind. This is that he should definitely not be criticizing people as much if he wants to make friends and influence people. Um, I want to say this this book is meant for like businessmen and stuff. It's like strategies to like get into your business partner's head and try to help help get a better deal. Well, and also um, it was written in the 30s. So I don't yeah. think like hu humanity has surely evolved socially, but m maybe I'm wrong. Maybe these principles still work to this day, almost 100 years later. Well, they probably got worse because of social media. But let's back up because Florian completely skipped over my point. Why is Sheldon claiming sisters are the worst? Like, what the fuck did she do? She's well, just reporting to him <laughs> that his mom is upset. Like, how is this well, a science fact? It, well, I thought he, he respected he gave, science. Why is he misusing the word <laughs> fucking fact here with his shitty opinion? Well, she gave him a lot of good ideas that led him down some roads that he rather would not have gone down, I guess. He, he he tried to make friends just because she told him to, I guess. So I mean, chronologically, that hasn't happened yet, though. I'm saying at the beginning of the episode, when, when this line is said, it just feels out of nowhere. Well, like, at least yeah. save a, a sick joke like that for when she's actually done something bad. Yeah, the only other interaction they have in this whole episode is Missy being incredibly helpful for him, too. So <laughs> Yeah, you're giving him yeah. like some smart advice, like outside of the box thinking that his autistic brain could not come up with. Uh, yeah, but that, that's actually great because he's actually terrible at being criticized, I guess, because he, he does not take criticism, but even though he dishes it out all the time. And, and when he gets cr constructive criticism, he thinks that it, as, if, as, as if she's the worst because of it. So that's certainly an interesting insight on him. Uh, Florian, this episode is pretty much about what would happen if an autistic child tried to use knowledge from a book to make a friend. And I wonder if you saw a little bit of yourself in young Sheldon, like when you try to make new friends, is it this perilous? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I definitely really like the part of young Sheldon where he sits alone and he doesn't want to be with anyone. And yeah. I thought that was, that was the most relatable. And then yeah. of course he had to be tossed out of, out of his comfortable starting state and has to go on a whole hero's journey to 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 travel to mount friendship you know and it's a big problem <laughs> uh i mean i i never did this obviously i never <laughs> tried to use scientific knowledge but to make friends as a nine-year-old you never walked up to three jocks <laughs> and said did, have, did you guys watch any sports programs over the weekend <laughs> Or were you kissing girls? And then, like, they all just stare at him and say nothing, which I feel like this is bullshit. Okay, maybe 1989 was a different time. But if uh, today, maybe uh, guys are a little kinder. I don't know. I don't hang out with the Zoomers. I feel like if three big, tall jock Chad guys, if a nine-year-old classmate who's like a super genius came up and started talking like this, they would at least humor him and be kind to him and like pretend that he's a little homie and give him some fist bumps and shit. Like, are you really going to ostracize like the little funny freak of the school? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Cause I feel like I would totally want this kid in my posse. I thought that he was going to get a swirly in this case, but I, I guess... I <laughs> Who guess the fuck would safe. physically bully a literal child half your oh. age? That is insane! Based on, like, the Stephen King stuff I've I've seen, I got the assumption that, like, an 80s teenager would probably, like, call him a slur or something and, and yeah, abuse him. I, I seriously struggle to imagine, in reality, 
where somebody who's close to being an adult, like a 16, 17, 18 year old being physically or in any way like bullying a child, a nine year old child. That just seems so unrealistic to me. Maybe I've just I've not met these sociopaths running around that would treat a child like this. I think I those it I movies would disagree. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh, those are fucking Stephen King movies. He's also a fucking loser nerd who has not experienced <laughs> the real life. He's just making shit up for a book. And, maybe, and those, are those, one who those bullies, no, those bullies were being influenced by a demonic clown that shows up every thirty-three years. So I don't think it's a realistic depiction. <laughs> that is, that is true. I, I have to concede yeah. on that. No, I, th- I think Mumkey's out of touch. Everyone's going to write comments on how they were bullied by, by taller kids, okay? It's not even taller. Fun. Half your oh, age. Yeah. Like, it's oh, not even yeah. your peer. You're, like, walking into elementary school and giving kids a swirly. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, I mean, they he came to their school. Yeah, but he's still a child. Man, I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Did you get physically bullied by people when you were nine? Like <laughs> by, by by people who are like eighteen. <laughs> anyway, those, those teenagers are a big problem. Okay, uh, I like. Uh, I don't even understand. We get some parallels, I think, with the the twins, Missy and Sheldon, because where Sheldon and we we learned this from Big Bang Theory this week, his severe OCD, and Missy before going to sleep. Uh, brushes her hair in the same spot 100 times and counts it out. And while she might have missed a few numbers, because she's not that, you know, not mathematically minded, as we learn, uh, does she also have an OCD if she's brushing her hair 100 times like that? I think that's just back in the 80s. Like, like little girls don't have a whole lot to do because they, they sort of just get ignored by, by popular well, culture and entertainment and all sorts of things, so... Well, specifically, it's because her mom told her that her best feature is her hair, right? So that's why she... Yeah. Wait, but she's done this before? Wow, is this how the hair was so good? Oh, wow. Yeah, getting getting young girls to be... Uh, to get used to the idea of having to look look perfect every moment of their lives, I think that's that's what they're they're doing there. That's my guess. Yeah, it is... Is this something that will need to be rectified later when when Missy says, Mom, how come Sheldon's good at math and I'm not? Like, what do I have going for me? And the mom says, well, you have pretty hair. Like, is did, are we supposed to cringe at that? Like, oh, you, you horrible bitch. You, you send your daughter down a bad path. Well, I mean, she's I she's supposed to tell her, like, the truth, right? She's asking, like, what, what am I good at? And she's like, oh, mm. You were trying to be good at things. Like, oh, honey, you don't need them book smarts. You you can just be pretty. That's equally valuable. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. She, she ends up at fucking Fuddruckers, so. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't know if things are going to get much better for me. Her so. mom should have helped her find uh, some sort yeah. of science that she would be good at. Or, you know, if she's not good at math, there's got to be an academic thing that could increase her confidence rather than brushing her fucking hair. Yeah, yeah. psychology, maybe. Sure, yeah. I mean, literally anything other than being a waitress at Fuddruckers. <laughs> but maybe her pretty hair gets her some big tips, unlike at the Cheesecake Factory, where I guess you don't get any tips. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you're if right. You're penny, maybe you she, no tips. Maybe, maybe she's Certainly. done the maths after all, and she figured out that the, the most money is in being a waitress after all. Wow. That's that, like the, the female privilege, because it is a fact that uh, <laughs> waitresses make more than waiters, because, you know, who you want to... You want to flirt with the woman bringing the food, so you give her extra money. And then if they put like a winky face on the bill, you also give them more money. Ooh, mm. wow. What yeah. what a brilliant thing. But then do you get hit on more if you put a winky face on there? Hmm. Yeah, probably. Like that's the give and take is that these freaks are going <laughs> to think I'm into them, but at least I can trick them psychologically into giving me more money. <laughs> And then we learned that the the Vietnamese family who has to work twelve hours a day and they get paid very very little. Yeah, let's get into that. This episode has <laughs> such a dark ending where he, yeah. he finally makes a new friend with like this uh a, like a, a Vietnamese refugee child who goes to the high school. And when he comes over for, for family dinner, he gives his life story, and it is fucking dark. It's it's a shocking turn for the show about a little nerdy kid. So I don't know why they, I mean, they I, got into I, all this. I think the show is pretty dark at times, so that makes sense. But I like how how Sheldon just in the end says, "Wow, that was depressing," and and then the scene ends. 
Yeah, and they didn't know what other like joke bumper to end the scene with. Uh, but would you? These jokes are written for like laugh tracks. I think I don't. I don't think they're used to the idea of. No, I saw that. That was funny. Come joke. on. Well, Florian, would you like to recap uh, Tam's tragic life? Well, his father apparently worked with the American forces that were invading Vietnam, and well, we all know that that went horribly. So he had to <laughs> flee. And well, he was put from- first. He was put into a re-education camp so that they oh, could yeah. make him a communist again, and then they escaped from that. Ah, I see. And then I, I guess they they went over on a boat. Was that really dangerous? Yeah, because they had to avoid the fucking pirates that were out and about. Cambodian pirates, yeah. Yeah, so they took a boat to Thailand and lived in a refugee camp where they had to eat like pigeon meat for years or something. That's that's a connection though. They they Tam's family went to Thailand and then they uh they had Thai food at the start of Big Bang Theory. Oh my god. There's a real it's obsession. All, it's all connected, I, yeah. Somebody call well, Weekend Warrior. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I like how the brother says, "Oh yeah, that sounds like a like a job for hot sauce." When when he talks about <laughs> rat meat, yeah, eating pigeons and rats. <laughs> and when yeah, Young and Sheldon's he, dad oh, says, I didn't "Have any hot sauce at all?" What a shame. Young Sheldon's dad says, "Oh, uh, I I served in in the Vietnam War. Uh, your mother's name isn't Kim Lee, is it?" So <laughs> the implication here is that Young Sheldon's dad knocked up an Asian woman named Kim Lee and has a bastard child in Vietnam. Yeah, they're yeah. gonna have to resolve that at some point in this show, and I'm not sure they're they're willing to go <laughs> well, to go there. That is a plot line from King of the Hill, but it was in Japan rather than Vietnam. And <laughs> and Hank does meet his half Japanese brother oh, when they yeah. go visit. So I wonder if Young Sheldon will have a similar plot. Maybe. So is 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 Sheldon's dad the one with the genius genes? Is that why he saw? Oh, this smart Asian kid must be my my son. <laughs> I think he's just good at fucking. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Young Sheldon's how, dad fucks. But how he does is, Sheldon he get is so the chat of the show? Hmm. Well, just like Malcolm in the Middle, I think it's just like a genetic lottery, or you know, it's like random things will get fucked up, and then you'll magically be smart. Like I, I don't hmm. know if he inherited his intelligence from either of his parents. Maybe his grandma is like a secret genius, and it skipped a generation, but. Uh, I think it was just uh, a miracle of of magic that Sheldon had this mental ability. I guess so. Some I people are just born smarter. Yeah, I know the grandmother's played by uh, Annie Potts, who play, played the uh, like Ghostbusters the lady <laughs> in the Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters. Yeah, well, the the female and ones. The, the, no, every version except for the the one where they're all women. <laughs> Wow, she says, nice Ghostbusters, what do you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that bitch. Dropping off or picking up. You know, yeah. <laughs> good bitch from her. Yeah, so I can't wait for Grandma to show up. Uh, that'll be good. Um, yep. Let's see. When Sheldon... Oh, yeah, and to, to finish Tam's story, when they moved to America, his father saved up money to buy a shrimp boat, and then uh, the Ku Klux Klan <laughs> burned it burned it to the ground, or I guess yeah. burned it to the ocean. Uh is that a thing? Did the KKK burn the shrimp boats of Vietnamese people back then? I thought they more hated black people, but maybe it's everybody. Well, they yeah, I mean, it's I probably they burned everybody. a lot of a lot of crosses and lawns and stuff. So they, I, I can see it. I was not expecting a KKK reference in this fucking Young Sheldon show. But okay, yeah, I'm asking Chat GPT. There, Did the KKK <laughs> burn Vietnamese shrimp boats? Wow. There is no widely documented historical incident of the KKK burning Vietnamese shrimp boats. KKK Wait, is actually, is primarily is actually... associated with racist activities targeting African Americans, but they've also targeted uh, immigrants, Catholics, and Jews. Okay, so immigrants, that counts. Wow, yeah. that's interesting. It's pretty similar to what you said. It's, is Chachi Pitti actually like, reliable now when you ask it stuff? Who could say? Or are you just rolling the dice here? <laughs> Yeah, it's like asking a fortune teller, you know. We yeah. we just we just don't know. It's definitely better than modern day Google. Probably well, that can't be by right. at least a little. Google has I mean, gone to shit. I mean, Google usually just links to Wikipedia, right? Yeah, yeah if you I mean, scroll Google's down enough. Purpose, yeah. Google's purpose now is to link to the same like four websites every single time. So, yeah. 
doesn't do mm. a whole lot. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Anyway, uh, Sheldon, he's got this book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, and his sister says, hey, you know, at the front of a library book, there's a list of all the other people who checked it out. So th- those are other losers like you who don't have any friends. Why not just go ask them? And it turns out the only people on the list are just the other teachers at the school. So two episodes in a row, we get to see just how insecure and miserable these teachers are as he like <laughs> interviews them about like why they checked out the book and why it didn't work and they have no friends. But at the very least, that bitch with the mustache seemed to have shaved it off. So character development all around. Wow, That's too good. bad she's going to be fat. Yeah, yeah. It says in two <laughs> years, Mr. Givens becomes the principal and uh, Mrs. McElroy becomes morbidly obese. I have to assume in two I, seasons, Shelton will still be at this school. So will we see this happen? I mean, he should. I hope be, so. Right? Are you really, really going to make like this actress her. get morbidly obese? <laughs> <laughs> they might just recast. Who knows? I really like this this cheeseburger feminist character, though. So I think she was she was the highlight of the episode, and she's like my what? new favorite character now. Honestly, what she said for like twenty seconds. Okay, yeah, we're doing was, the, the young Sheldon character seconds. power rankings, and Purple <laughs> yeah. has as Mrs. McElroy as number one. <laughs> wow! And then what? George Senior is yeah, number George, two. Uh, easily, yeah. It's, yeah. it's almost it's pretty close between the two of them. Uh, wow. Young Sheldon's number three. Missy yeah. probably gets number four. Missy is pretty good. Yeah. George yeah. Jr. is going to be pretty low. It's going to be Tam, then George Jr. <laughs> or probably, the I guess, the mom in between as well. You know. And eventually, oh, the mom, she's on my shit list two episodes in a row now. Because episode one, she backtracks on Sheldon's fashion choices like a fucking coward. In episode two, she tells her own daughter, hey, at least your hair is pretty, even <laughs> though you're stupid. Like, what a fucking bitch. Yeah. Uh, I hope she improves, but... And, uh, of course, young Sheldon's grandma will eventually ascend the ranks, but uh, we have not met her yet. Probably. Um, I mean, um, the chicken kid is is high up there, too, I think. What? He was He's only horrible. in there for another, like, five seconds. Is he never going to be in this show beyond, like, five-second clips or, or what? Well, I guess not. I mean, he doesn't have anything to say. Yeah, he had a chance a very simple, to make a friend. He's a simple <laughs> child. He, he loves his chickens. But Sheldon could have made better friends with the chickens. Oh, God. There's another line from Sheldon's mom that was insane. Do you guys remember yeah. what she says to Tam as she brings in the, the fried chicken or the whatever the fuck that they're going to eat? Oh, at least she doesn't yeah. crawl. Yeah, and, uh, like, no. you're probably, Tam, you're not used to a food that's not wriggling around on the plate, huh? Oh. Like implying <laughs> that they eat live bugs? I yeah, thought no, you were talking his, about the line. Where fucking... Oh, my God. When, he, when she said that. Yeah. <laughs> Purple, what line? Oh, I thought you you meant the line where she says like, "Oh, just pretend, just close your eyes, and when you hear Jesus, just think Buddha or whatever." Uh, yeah, That's yeah, a, she's so many racist zingers popping out. Yeah. <laughs> are, do, are they even Buddhist in Vietnam? Is that a thing? I have no well, idea. Luckily, I got this little website called ChatGPT. <laughs> what good. percent of the Vietnamese are Buddhist? And then I like his reply. He says, uh, actually, I'm not Buddhist. I'm Catholic. And she's also disappointed by that. Like, oh, that's too bad. Yeah. She's like more <laughs> disappointed. Uh, 85% of the Vietnamese population adheres to Buddhism. Did you say 85 yeah. or 25? 85. Well, okay. I guess she had well, a pretty good yeah. chance of being right. Damn. You know, at least she's she knows her, her her ways to stereotype here. Yeah, I mean, if if it's statistically probable, I think it's okay to stereotype anybody. <laughs> I guess yeah, so. I mean, that was a safe assumption, I guess. <laughs> but then we we learn more about about Sheldon's relationship with this transgender person that has lived here before in the. In, in, uh, the, in big the Big Bang, Bang Theory. They, oh, wow, they you're backtracking like 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your train of thought is something to admire, Florian. Hey, we were talking about stereotypes, okay? <laughs> I think I think when he's when he said it, it was a terrible transvestite, I think he was just being well, I guess that's just establishing dialogue. But I, I think he we actually hear that he's he's been somewhat friends with this person. I did yeah, I, I took all the notes. With his webcam. Yeah. So they're they're complaining or Sheldon's complaining about how filthy Penny's apartment is and, and Sheldon says, Hey, you know, the transvestite, he kept this place immaculate. And evidently in, in the transvestite's closet, there were several police uniforms. So I don't know if that 
is like if it's a female police uniform for the sake of his uh, cross dressing, or if he was just a cop, probably no, just I, a cop. I, no, yeah, <laughs> possible. Female. And Leonard wants to know why were you in the transvestite's closet? And Sheldon says he was helping him run cable for a webcam. And I'm wondering why he would have to be in the closet to do that because a webcam you would just <laughs> plug into your computer. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe he has his computer out in the fucking living room, just like Sheldon and Leonard do. So. Yeah, and, and clearly this person was not in the closet at all, so, yeah. Well, transvestites <laughs> aren't gay. I, I would argue, I mean, if Florian's 20% gay, most transvestites <laughs> are less gay than Florian. Well, you could you be closeted with, with, with several sexual orientations. Just you because know? you like to wear women's clothes doesn't mean you're a homosexual, though. Like, maybe you no, just think if, that they look better. It, no, like if you hide like the fact that you like to do it. Well, there's a good reason to hide that because people like Florian will beat you with baseball bats. <laughs> yeah. Me? Why, why me? <laughs> He's so hateful. I know there's a, there's a lot of cross-dressers on, on Grindr over here. So, <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Florian, yeah. you got to expand your horizons on Grindr. Yeah, yeah like come to Canada. Damn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You'll come in Canada, too. <laughs> yeah. That'll be her name. Yep. Okay, any final thoughts on this young Sheldon before we compare which episode was better? Well, I want to talk about real quick uh Chuck Lorre, the executive producer on these shows and also like like showrunner, I assume for them. He has a vanity card at the end because he has like his production company and he gets a vanity card where he puts he writes like a, this this little like thing. It's after the credits, so you know you're you're going to be missing it, especially the the ways that we're watching this. But yeah, every episode he has this vanity card, and I wrote down what they are from the first four episodes that we've done so far. The first one is on like a little mini rant on the guy who invented like DVR recording or something. The He's upset is, about it. Yeah, well, I guess he he came up with the idea, and then the guy stole it as his his contention. What? <laughs> but I think it's like a fake bit, so I don't think it's it's real. But uh, there's a young Sheldon was a special thanks to people who were like nice to them in Houston. I assume they they went and researched like real Texas cities and stuff for the research on the show. And uh, for episode two of Big Bang Theory, he has a list of don'ts, which includes don't use emoticons and don't hug while handshaking because it's something the Romans did while their empire was in decline. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not sure what that's all about. Well, that's that's um, pretty crazy too, because their empire was was in decline for like a thousand years, and I'm pretty sure they made some decent decisions in then still. Yeah, so that's I don't know. Pretty weird. Casting yeah, and, shade at the Romans, ridiculous. Yeah. And young Sheldon episode two has a picture of a dog with the caption "Good Harvey." So, yeah, that one's that one's my favorite one. Yeah, so that's far. the only acceptable one so far. <laughs> yeah, but uh, he has a, a website. Stupid. Yeah. He has a site where he posts all these vanity cards and uh, he, t wow. he he's, has this thing written up for what a vanity card is. And he says it's a full screen production company credit. I, I read I wrote this down a full screen production company credit that airs for one second at the end of a TV show. So named because the credit is bullshit. The actual producer of every network TV show is a large corporation that risks capital and development costs and deficit financing so that in success. It can steal money from profit participants, i.e. schmucks with vanity cards. And then I figured I'd look up this fucking guy's net worth, and he apparently has over $600 million. So, yeah, he's made a lot sure. of shows, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that, quite a lot. Sounds, I'm not sure what he's whining about with these with this fucking description. I'm, but I mean, that sounded all pretty fucking nonsensical. What he said. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah it's, it's just like crazy, like 60 year old rants and stuff from this guy. Wow. <laughs> so, well, I mean, I guess if he's written like 300 <laughs> episodes of Big Bang Theory, I guess he, he probably didn't get like a whole million for each one. But still, I don't know. don't know if he deserves it. Hmm. So, uh, he, he made a... What's that? You kind of cut out. It's, it's, oh, he, he made at least like 400 million off of Big Bang Theory, so I think it's just a little 400? rich that he's complaining about people. Didn't you say 60? Yeah, I think it's a it's a bit much. Hmm? No, 600 million is his total. Ooh. Well, that that's is from, a lot from two and a half men in Big Bang Theory mostly. 
Oh, well, I guess, I guess those, those, those are some really important shows still, so I guess that makes sense. But yeah, I mean, yeah, like, but I don't, I don't know about him make... whining about having his, his money stolen from the participants and stuff, you know, because, yeah, he's making more money than anyone ever needs off of these things. Well, I mean, I, I, I definitely don't like the argument he's making more money than he needs. Like, bitch, that's what money's for, okay? It's like a high school, well, right? Yeah, but, I, I just don't like him point... whining about it, okay? As if he's being <laughs> yeah, stolen from by these evil networks when he's raking in like half a billion dollars off of these fucking shows. Yeah, I mean, the the networks probably didn't even make that much money considering they had to pay, like, all of the costs. So, probably, like, the fact that he has it, like, risk-free and he just gets whatever is left, like, that's pretty good, you know? I'm I'm, I'm not sure how the, the money breaks down. I know uh, the guy who plays Sheldon is, is worth, like, a good good amount, too. Like, I think $100 million or something on his yeah, own. That makes sense, yeah. And I, I guess it seems, yeah. It's, okay, a lot of I think it's time to break to down who's going to win episode two, who had the better second episode. Last week, you guys agreed. Young Sheldon took it away. But will it be the same today? Who wants to go first? Or maybe I should since I did not even vote last time. Yep, go ahead. Yeah. Uh-oh. <laughs> well, you know, I, I felt like uh, the pilot episode of both shows was superior to both of these. But uh, you guys seem to disagree with that. Is that is that accurate? Hmm. I don't know about superior, but I think this. Uh, I think this one is at least they're at least comparable. I think these pilot episodes. Yeah, are, I think they're, the they're definitely comparable. Yeah, I guess. Uh, you know, I, I was not a fan of the the hijinks of them trying to push that furniture up the stairs. I thought that they could have done more comedically with it. Whereas Young Sheldon episode. Uh, it was shorter, so it had less time to waste, and I, I didn't have any objections to any of the segments. Like, I disagree with the things that the characters do and say, but that's not a reason to object to it happening. It's just the characters uh, needing to learn and grow a little bit, specifically young Sheldon's mom. So I guess uh, I guess young Sheldon was probably better this week as well, but uh, let's see what you guys think. I'm actually shocked that you think that that Sheldon's mom is worse than Sheldon, who breaks into his neighbor's home to, <laughs> to clean it up. Like, I mean, that seems like a lot worse than just being like a slightly bad mom in this one episode. Uh, I I think she set Missy down a path that leads to Fuddruckers, whereas Sheldon literally improved his neighbor's life, and she agrees that the change was for the better at the end. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He got lucky that the police wasn't called. All right. I don't know. It's. it's is it really breaking crazy. and entering if you have a key? Yes, no, yes, nothing. Nothing was broken. He, he stole the key. Okay. Yeah, but I don't think you know what the word breaking means, Florian. Like you literally have to break down their door or break through their window for it to be a real B and E. This is just. And he's not even burglarizing. He's just trespassing. If anything, he gets like a misdemeanor. Yeah, I I guess so. Well, it definitely would be a misdemeanor. All right, so I think uh, well, I didn't like the the trespassing plot, so I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna go with Young Sheldon on this one. I especially like the 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 Asian kid. I don't know why why you guys didn't like him. I, I okay, I thought he was you're just him. making was shit up. Him. Nobody ever disliked the Asian kid. What the fuck are you, you talking you about? Him, you put him low on your ranking, okay? What? Well, he's, he's I didn't high, even do a ranking. George Junior. Oh, you didn't. Right, uh, I saw you were doing it with with purple together. I saw you were agreeing. No, I was helping I, him build his. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I, I would not have that. the teacher as number one. <laughs> Fuck that well, teacher. She's not even on my fucking list. Yeah, I, I know, right? That's, That's pretty strange. She's my favorite character. Okay, don't don't fucking <laughs> mock my my preferences right. here. Don't be yucking his yum, Florian. You yum yucking <laughs> yum yuck yummer fucker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I well, I still think it was like definitely Young Sheldon this time. I, but I'm I'm thinking on overall. I think Big Bang Theory is going to be more interesting to me. So I guess I'm looking forward to to the next one. Well, I well, guess I've been outvoted, but I I preferred the Big Bang Theory this time, honestly. Wow. Well, what's your argument? Uh, I I just fucking I I like the bit where they're pushing that TV up the stairs. I like Raj. I like yeah, all I like sorts of too. stuff going on here. Just okay. The, them planning their bullshit for the media center. It's it's fun, fun bits. It's a simple kind of show, but it's you know. Yeah. <laughs> Should we do some? Uh, I guess that puts the scoreboard at two for Young Sheldon, zero for Big Bang Theory. 
Uh, still anybody's game, I think. Uh, I did yeah. look. What did I post in our thing? There's like an episode count for both shows. Yeah, there's a there's a bit of a discrepancy. There's 130 for um for Young Sheldon, and then like 277 for Big Bang Theory. Yeah, so I guess in a hundred and, and and there's still new episodes of Young Sheldon airing. So it'll probably be closer to another 140 for Young Sheldon, if not a little more. But yeah, uh, and they're on their last season, and they've only yeah. got a, a few episodes left. So I guess in 140 weeks, Young Sheldon will be over and we'll still have about 130 Big Bang Theory episodes. So I, yeah. I imagine at that time we will be doubling up on Big Bang Theory and just comparing two chronological episodes each week. <laughs> so look forward to that in three years. Well, I guess uh, yeah, Big Bang Theory will be winning then. <laughs> wow. But then uh, by the time the Georgie spinoff comes out, maybe we could start comparing that to Big Bang Theory. Because that'll know, surely I be out. Not at all. I There's fucking no way can't stand good, young right? Georgie here. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he'll be, he won't be young, I guess, right? Now, you well, Zoomers yeah. might not remember this fucking purple colonel, you, you 21-year-old little dweeb, but when young Sheldon was announced, we also said, oh, nobody's going to watch this. Who wants to see a young Sheldon? So you might scoff at the subject or the, the concept of a young Georgie show or whatever the fuck. But well, you know, hi- children- history has proven that we man plans and God laughs. Well, uh, fucking, I, I don't know. Sheldon was at least like very popular from what I can tell. Like pretty much no one likes George Jr. Though. Maybe that doesn't doesn't pan out in the ratings. Like maybe his episodes. Yeah, I doubt the, the Paramount executives are blindly offering a show to an unpopular character. Surely they know something we don't know. Uh, I'm shocked Paramount still exists. Honestly, I've never seen them do do a bunch of great things as a uh, as TV TV or like media company stuff, you know. Well, you need to go watch like Survivor. Well, um, no, I don't think I <laughs> missing out, missing out on Survivor and some seasons of Big Brother. Not all of them. That's that's fine. <laughs> that's about it. Uh, I got a fish tank instead. Do we have any predictions for episode three? I did not get Young Sheldon debating the preacher, so maybe that'll happen next time. Hmm. I think we're going to flesh out Tam a little more, I think. And that's that's something I'm excited to see. Hopefully we get another bit with the teacher and her neuroses and her issues. So, Will they have to break young Sheldon out of prison because the FBI shows up to arrest him at the end of episode two? <laughs> that, no, that would be, be an interesting about. turn. If they start doing like prison breaks and then they're living living a life of crime like Breaking Bad or something, that would be a fun way for this to go. You know, or young Sheldon has to tattoo the, the blueprint of the prison on his body, you know, to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets out and he starts cooking meth. I would I would watch <laughs> fucking can you imagine Breaking Bad with young Sheldon in the lead role though? That uh, could you imagine something. can you imagine the entertainment of the future where you can just tell Chat GPT, make me Young, <laughs> make make me Sheldon oh. breaks bad, and then he it, it writes it perfectly. I, mean, I, I guess that's true. We're not too far off from seeing it. Oh, but that is so unethical, Florian, because you could have <laughs> commissioned an artist to make Young Sheldon Breaking Bad episode for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we'll we'll all be dead by the robots eventually, so don't worry about it. Do you guys have anything you want to plug this week? Well, but I'll definitely get started on that regular show thing, okay? So don't worry. It was definitely not an April Fool's joke. Wait, so yeah, is Purple gonna, not going to do, do that, that with you? Oh, well, he he should. Yeah, he will. I I, th- I think I'm interested in it. I think we're gonna we're gonna have to do that together. Yeah. I mean, you don't have a choice because, like, <laughs> okay. you you need. You'll need the money for editing the episode, so... Okay. Now, I, I know the show the, the show is called Regular Show, but based on the content, I would assume it's actually anything but. Yeah, it, it gets really repetitive how every time just some, some stupid-ass Deus Ex Machina villain shows up and they have to battle them for, like, five minutes and then the, <laughs> the plot wraps up. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't wait to... to just have my brain melted by that premise reoccurring. But will they be fired? It's got to be like one episode where they get fired, right? My mom. That guy? <laughs> yeah. You got that guy? Well, he will never get fired. He's the best. <laughs> Muscle Man skips. Uh, what's the name of the gumball man? Benson. Benson. Rigby. Wow. Mordecai. I mean, they got some good names. Mordecai is a fucking solid name. That is a good name, yeah. That's that's one of the only fucking things I know about this show too. So 
<laughs> yeah, I, I like how, how the two horrible slackers have really cool names. <laughs> yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. Uh, bye, uh, everybody. For the Bazinga Boys, I've been Ba. Yeah. Bazinga. Well, no, I'd be Za, and then you'd be... Or, uh, no, I'd be Zing, and then you'd be Ga. Well, you could have been boys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Singer. <laughs> <laughs>